Read the scriptures. <laughs> if the earth is round, why don't the people at the bottom fall off? Huh? And what about the ones on the sides? Why don't they slide off? Think about that. <laughs> Davos knows. Hey, brother, what do you say? Is the earth flat or round? Round, flat, round, flat, round, flat, round. The lumber, the world, she's flat. The world, she's around. She's flat. Look, King, she's around like the apple. She's flat like the pancake. Posta fazul. She's around, she's a firm, she's a fully packed. She's around like my head. She's flat like your head. The map is a flat out lie, people. If you read the legend on the map, here it says, in fact, South America is actually nine times larger than Greenland. <laughs> now, look at this map. The equator on this map is down here. All the white countries are larger than they should be, and all the countries of people of color are smaller than they should be. This is a visual image that teaches children a lie. That's how big stars are. Is that how big stars are and what they look like? They're like tiny little balls. still flat so it represents to me the the promise of the future and enlightenment and it's representational of your view here as well i wanted to give you this book as a gift.
change. It's a public health nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we all look at this, we, we have to learn from it. Zika will be the first of many viruses over the years because the world is flat. <laughs>
the idea of being able to see a star that's 482 quadrillion miles away is so completely ridiculous. It is so bad. I just had to let that one go. It's like 482 quadrillion miles. No, sorry, your theory is wrong. We're not buying it. We're not believing it. Last time I saw you, you was booed up, booed up, ready for a new fuck. Last time you saw me, I was P.I. to the motherfucking MP, what? And lately I heard you some broke bitch. Alright man, flat earth, flat motherfucking earth. Truth bomb part three, finally fucking here. That's what we're doing now. Listen, I'm... Hadouken! 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 Um, no, like nobody who's been in space has come back and said, "Yeah, I was all a joke." Right? There's, yeah, there's. I mean, there's videos of. You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to. I want you to swear Get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. Okay. If you walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you if you don't leave me alone. So why don't you just put the into the record in the argument and put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Cyril, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. The Earth well, you're talking to the wrong guy. Why don't we're you there. talk to the administrator in NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. There's other incentives for them not to do it. For, you know, I don't know what, go, what could go on behind the scenes, but certainly it's part, you know, if you're part of a, a fun, what do, what, what do we know that there's clubs out there that these people get together and, and that's, it's fun for them. It's fun to, to trick everyone. Excuse me, they're exploiting your ignorance of the financial, of, of, of the laws of physics for their own financial gain. So I see science literacy as a kind of vaccine against all of the world around you. Did you know I know you? Hey, I know you. Flat earther became synonymous with anti-science. As soon as you have an observation, I'm 30 miles away from the international airport in Iceland. I'm across the water. I can see it. It's 30 miles away. It's 50 miles driving. So on my phone, I can see it's 30 miles away. I can see the airport. There it is. It should be behind 600 feet of curvature. It's behind zero feet of curvature. They sold you. They put this thing in front of you in school the first day. Fifth, you're five years old. You're in kindergarten. What do they put in front of you? They put in a globe and a Mercator projection of the Earth with Greenland's like bigger than Africa. Remember that map? I've seen that map. Isn't this the map that you use K through 16 in the United States of America? Now, folks, look at this map. According to your, so, your social studies teacher, what is the equator? Right An imaginary line where? Yeah. Around the center of the Earth. Then if, if this map is correct, then the equator must be here, and Chicago has a tropical climate. Are these accurate? Is any map accurate? Is Google Earth accurate? Every cartographer will tell you that no map is accurate. Everything is, is out of whack by about 5 to 10 percent. Easy. If the Earth doesn't move, then what? Then the heavens move. an observation you got to make it you got to get this observation yourself and, and come to deal with it because when you put all of this together you realize that we're in a rational irrational situation the sun's motion and the sun's timing system can't be exactly correlated precisely with the moons the moon loses 12 percent on the sun every day the stars lose one percent against the sun every day so the sun's tick back one percent each day 360 is a whole turnaround, but we have 365 days. When you start putting the sun's motion, the moon's motion, and the star's motion together, it's irrational. They don't make sense. So you end up with Mayan calendars is trying to get an accurate of where we're going into the future because these three clocks don't match up with each other. That indicates intelligence. That indicates that we're in a realm, not a planet. We're in a realm of some sort. We've never left this planet. And Tesla said, this is a realm, it's not a planet. Tesla said that. Yeah, and then you look at things like gravity, right? This is what proof, one of the proofs that we're on a sphere is we needed gravity because if it was flat, it's just up and down. On a sphere, how do the people at the bottom stay on gravity? So you look into Einstein's right, and you look at when they asked Einstein, how does it feel to be the smartest man on earth? 
he said, I don't know, that's Tesla. And then you look at what Tesla said about Einstein, he said he was a, a hobo in purple coat. It's mathematical garbage. The theory of relativity is garbage. This is what proves, supposedly it's a theory that proves gravity. What the fuck did he just Tesla said it's, it's useless. It, it's nice to metaphysicists, but no scientists agree with this that it proves anything. And so Einstein was, was risen to fame by these people, that global, the people that want um, people to they go, oh no, this guy's proving the Earth's sphere because of this Fucking science, bro. Like, Damn, must have been a hell of them stegosaurus. It's over century burning fossil fuel. Still ain't no shortage. Rose Einstein. Oh, this guy's proving gravity, guys. He's the smartest man ever lived when Tesla knew it was all bullshit. And why do they want us to think it's a sphere? Because they make money with like airline it, it, tickets? It, it, or like what? This proves God in a way. This, I, again, I believe has come at the exact right time so that we, we awaken to what's going on in the world. Nothing else, you know, 9-11 even, hasn't awoken people, right, to this extent. You know, for me, um, I've, I've been an atheist for 40 years. Um, from the age of 13, you know, I, I didn't want anything to, to do with God and Bibles and whatever and religions. Um, and now, I know for a fact there is a creator. There are only two possibilities. Either there is a God or there isn't. And both of them are terrifying. Yeah. If there isn't a God, then nobody's in control. We're hurtling through space and, and there's no plan and there's no, there's no nothing and, you know, that's terrifying. If there is a God, then we'd better find out who he is and what he wants and do exactly what he says. And it turns out that he gave us very specific instructions on how to live. Um, and they're not, they're not rules as in, you know, laws that you, you know, that um, you I'll must uh, follow uh, because, uh, you know, or put you in prison if you don't. No, these are, these are, are rules to live by, to, to make a harmonious world. You know, don't, don't harm anyone, don't kill anybody, don't steal from people, you know, don't covet people's items, you know. Don't lie. Don't lie. I mean, <laughs> these, these things are written in our hearts anyway, yeah? sense but God in the sense of being the self the deep down basic whatever there is and you're all that only you're pretending you're not The uh, azimuthal equidistant projection map that the USGS actually uses is the Flat Earth map. The UN logo is another example of it. The UN logo is actually a Flat Earth map divided into 33 Masonic sections, by the way. But you can just type in Flat Earth map on Google. It's a disk shape. The North Pole is in the center. All the continents go out from there. And Antarctica, instead of being a ice continent on the bottom of the globe actually surrounds us 360 degrees and how far that ice goes outwards is unknown at this point so it's a cover-up that's what the antarctic treaty is all about that's why you can't independently explore antarctica and when people like jarl and Ahoy try to go down there they get turned away at gunpoint and put in prison so um, there's a big cover-up there in Antarctica as well. I don't know how far the ice goes, whether there's an edge, a barrier, a dome, or infinite plane. But what we do know is that the Earth and the water is completely flat, for as far as we can see and as far as we've measured. And the horizon is completely flat as far up as we go. All amateur rockets and all amateur balloons sent up over 20 miles, as high as they can go. The horizon is flat all the way around and it rises to the camera all the way up. It rises to the level of the camera. Now, this is totally impossible on a ball. No matter how big the ball was, as you rise up, you have to look down to see the curvature, look down to see the horizon. But what actually happens if you go up in a hot air balloon, the horizon rises right on up with you the whole way up. It just keeps on coming up at eye level as high as you're gonna go. That's just impossible on a ball. If you think about it, if, the, if you're on a ball and you're in a hot air balloon or a, an airplane, you should not be able to see out your window, straight out your window, the horizon. You should have to look down, further and further down, the higher you ascend to be able to see that horizon. 
but you'll never look down to the horizon on the earth. It will always rise up to your level. There's another observation. This one took me a while to understand this. I've been observing it, something you want to take in. As you get higher up in the atmosphere, the Earth at 20,000 feet should begin to pull away from you if we're on a 25,000 mile ball circumference Earth. Which means you should start to see the curvature and you should be able to optically measure it by snapping it to a grid in your camera. I haven't been able to make that observation. That's why the whole thing broke down on me. Here's what's interesting. Our world was supposed to be scientific. We're supposed to use the scientific method. That's what we're taught. If you use the scientific method, eventually you run into this. You can't question that. That's not questionable. That's just a fact. No, 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 no. We want to use the scientific method to evaluate this supposed fact. No, 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 no. You can't do that because that's a fact. Any field you run into, you'll find these suppositions. They're, they're built into it. So we're going to question the supposition that we're on a curved surface. We'll question optically with that camera right there. In order to question it optically, we have to put the camera at the lens. We can't make a mistake and think that the lens of that camera is not going to affect our outcome because it will. The lens of your eye also affects the outcome. So that means the horizon has to be exactly at eye level and the horizon of your camera and the reticle at the center of the lens needs to snap to flat horizon right there. Then we go out to a peninsula right on the sea. You snap to flat horizon on a reticle in the middle of your camera and then you swing it to left and right, 30 to 40 miles that way or that way. That should drop off 600 feet on the edges. You should be able to detect some curvature with your camera. We are always surrounded our whole lives and always have been by a straight line that runs around us with no curvature around it. There's no optical curvature. Whatever that means for you, it's an observation you have to make. The observation we're told we should make is eight inches times the distance in miles squared. That's the fall off of the ball Earth. You determine if that's something you observe. And when you stop observing that, then you still gotta start questioning what is going on here. Then sea level, then sea level, pole. Near the pole. And has nothing to do with has nothing to do with warming and melting warming and the ice caps. Why is that? Why is that? Because, because Earth, Earth, we know it spins. We know it spins. Once, uh, once, uh, day, yes, day, yes. Did you know I know you? Yeah, I know you. Three people know Three people know the day last year. Good for road Good number for road number two. two. <laughs> there is still a great stuff. So, so you spin, you know, when you spin pizza dough, it so, kind of out. It's wider in the middle than uh, so, so, so you spin Earth, you know, when you spin throughout its life, it's kind of even when it out. formed, it yeah. was spinning. It's wider in the middle. And it got a little wider so at the Earth equator than throughout it its life, even when it formed. formed. So it's it not actually spinning. a sphere, and it got a little it's wider. An, it's oblate the equator, and officially it's an oblate sphere at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It. It's an it's oblate. Not only that, and officially it's an oblate. It's slightly wider below the equator than the but not only that, a little chubbier. It's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. So. It turns out the pear-shaped yeah, pear shape is a good word. It's like pear-shaped. Is so bigger. It turns out than the, the height of Mount Everest above sea level. Bounce. Is flat big. line. You fooled us for the last time. Flat line. Flat line. Because it's not fitting the model that we're sold. That we're oh we're on a ball. Mars is a ball. Um, Venus is a ball. The sun's a ball, and we're going around that ball. Southern Hemisphere. Anybody can prove this. You can take any data out you like, and it's like that on the internet. Same latitude, Southern Hemisphere is different from the Northern Hemisphere. It's different sun movement. The sun moves faster in the Southern Hemisphere than in the Northern. There's no twilight in the Southern Hemisphere. There's no twilight in New Zealand. But as the summer progresses in the Northern Hemisphere, we have a twilight. The sun's still out at 9 or 10 p.m. If the further north you are, 11 p.m., that sun is still visible little bit in the sky twilight not so in the southern hemisphere that can't be rectified on a symmetrical ball it indicates that the sun moves and we don't as far as i'm concerned my study of this heliocentric model is a nightmare complete garbage think about that
Man, look at that night sky. Just like a deep blue water with candles on the bottom. Yeah, underwater candles. Feels like if we just let go of this hill, we could just fall up into it and swim around. Yeah, the Milky Way would be our pool noodle. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Pitcher steroid Santa Claus kicks and deals. It's a long fly ball going back, back. And the ball shatters the sky, bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. These mosquitoes can get Zika virus very easily from biting somebody, and the world is flat, right? The World Cup happened. Yeah, you ain't seen my best. Checkmate in a game of chess. Globalists see me as a threat. Free thinking, got a world at my neck, huh? And my paranoid picture, Malcolm X in a room full of pigs trying not to bust a sweat. Hey, Neil Tyson need to loosen up his vest. They probably write that man one hell of a check. Hey, I'm over here on this side of town. Come on over, 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 over here, try to clown. Hey, I'd never pipe down if they weren't coming for me. Then they definitely coming for me now. Bounce, flatline. You fooled us for the last time. Flatline, flatline. There's no superior bloodline then. So you want to find the farthest point from that One center. thing every country can agree on restricted access to the polls. The Here's the UN, the we believe you. Than sea level. Is there restricted yeah. access to the polls? There's nothing to do with global I mean, they're super cold. Nice. You can go I there. Mean, Good luck. Because, <laughs> like, are people banned Earth. from going? <laughs> We know it, none of this makes any sense. I don't know. Maybe maybe we're stuff. the ignorant ones. Maybe you know so we did I have wrong no idea. all along. You can have the credit. <laughs> no use changing all the history books just for little old me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>